So I've had the EOS R5 now for about six or seven months and I just thought of making a simple video of what do I think about using this EOS R5 for about six or seven months now. Um, here are some of the things that I wanted to share with you guys in this video and what do I think about the EOS R5. So I'm just going to break it up into a few sections in this video and we're first going to start out first with overheating. So does the EOS R5 overheat and the, my honest answer to that is the EOS R5 definitely does overheat and it's definitely one of those elephants in the room that everybody has to address. If you are going to buy the EOS R5 and you are thinking that a firmware is going to sort out the overheating, I think you're definitely going to feel upset knowing that the fact that a firmware isn't going to basically eradicate the whole overheating issue. Um, as far as I'm concerned, the overheating is really manageable. I haven't gotten to the stage where the overheating literally makes my camera shut down. The only thing that I have been experiencing is the fact that whenever the camera does overheat, the timer on the high quality 4K modes, the 8K modes and the 4K 120 mode does actually reduce its time of being able to record. So that's the only real setback to it. So for me, I have been using the EOS R5 and I have been shooting it, you know, as um, a video and stills camera. But to be honest with you, I have been shooting mainly with the EOS R5 in short intermittent bursts. So I've not been shooting sort of like long form videos with the EOS R5. So it has been quite manageable, but I think somehow if you are gonna be using the EOS R5 as a workhorse, and if you do want to use this camera to shoot videos with, you know, for long, long form videos like events and stuff like that, you might as well steer away from the EOS R5 simply because it does have that limitation of overheating. So in my opinion, the camera has brilliant quality, you know, in terms of image quality, ISO performance is probably the best Canon ISO performance that I've ever seen in any, in any ca Canon cameras. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is also the ease of use. You know, Canon makes such easy cameras to use and the EOS R5 is definitely no exception to that. Using the camera was so easy, you know, it didn't take a lot to browse through the menu. So if you're new to the Canon system and you're not familiar with using menus, I can guarantee using a Canon camera will definitely make you change your mind about terrible and difficult menus. This camera has got simple menus to use and it's just brilliant, it's easy. You can even control your camera from the touch screen itself and it feels almost like using an iPhone because it's that sensitive. I have used quite a lot of cameras with um, touch screen systems, but I think in my opinion, nothing really beats Canon's touch screen system. It's just so sensitive and it simply works. So. I will definitely say in terms of ease of use, this camera is just brilliant. Now, the other thing I wanna talk about is the IBIS. Now, this camera does have a bit of an IBIS issue. If you do use wide angle lenses with this camera, you're definitely gonna notice a wobble. And you'll see this wobble at the side of the, you know, at the side of the frame itself. And it is quite jarring if you're doing a lot of drastic, you know, shaky movements. But other than that, I have noticed when I'm using my 24 millimeter lens on this camera, and if you do control your movement, you know, not to shake the camera too much, it is quite tolerable. And I, yeah, I've gotten away with using the 24 millimeter uh, lens on this camera. So I would say, if you are gonna use anything wider than 24 millimeters, you do have to be careful about the IBIS. You're definitely gonna see that. Now, the other thing also I wanted to talk about is the autofocus. The eye autofocus on this camera is just amazing. I've never used a Canon camera which really locks onto the eye and you, you, you know, you're really free to compose your shots. You don't have to worry anymore like those days. You know, I used to shoot with my camera back then when I used to shoot and I would recompose the shot. But now with the eye autofocus, you just have to set the eye autofocus and it's just gonna stick onto the eye. But there is a bit of, you know, a few things that you do have to bear in mind whenever you're using eye autofocus and it is the fact that 
In eye autofocus mode, certain lenses may be a bit slower for the eye autofocus to catch on. And one of the lenses that I did notice that was kind of slow to actually adjust to the real-time eye autofocus would definitely have to be the 51.2 and the 85.1.2. There were many times when I was actually using that lens, the eye autofocus wasn't immediately accurate, but it wasn't you know, necessarily bad. So if you were shooting something that's really stationary and it had like simple sort of like movements back and forth, you're not gonna notice that the autofocus would go off. It only happens when you perhaps have something that is quite fast moving, then you're definitely gonna notice that you might get some shots um, not accurately focusing on the eyes. So that's one thing also. And some of the things that I didn't really like about the EOS R5, the main thing, I think the thing that is probably the worst thing about the EOS R5, even worse than the fact that this camera overheats, in my opinion, is the Kodaks. The camera has horrible Kodaks, I tell you. It is so big. The files from this camera are so big and so difficult to edit. Um, especially when you're shooting this camera in 4K, in C-Log, and it, actually saves the file into a 422 10-bit file at H265 file and it is so big that it is difficult to edit so um, I do hope that Canon will come up with a new firmware that will address it apparently I was told that it is supposed to come out this month but I haven't seen the software yet or the firmware yet so I'm really hoping that they do come out with a firmware for the Canon because in my opinion the footage from this this camera is brilliant but the Kodak is really letting it down it's not one of those camera Kodaks that is easily you know edited on a timeline so well yeah I guess that's pretty much my take on the EOS R5 after using it for six to seven months now I really love the images that come out from this camera I think this is perhaps one of the best Canon cameras that I've used you know um personally speaking you know if uh if they do decide to sort out the heat, I think that that will be the biggest thing that will make this camera improve. Other than that, every single tick on the box, besides the Kodak, of course, you know, it was ticked for me with this camera. I think this is a brilliant camera and I'm happy to use it. And yeah, I guess that's my quick take on what do I think about the EOS R5. So anyway, I hope you did find this video helpful and if you were on the fence about whether or not you should get the EOS R5, for me, if you're a full-on hybrid shooter and you're not doing long-form videos, then yeah, the EOS R5 is definitely a no-brainer. But if you are gonna be using this camera purely for its video features, then yeah, I think you might as well just get the A7S III or something like that because this camera definitely has a bit of a limitation in terms of video features so well not really video features but it does have limitations when it comes to video because it does overheat anyway i hope you guys found this quick you know sharing of experience useful if you did please don't forget to give me a like share and subscribe and i hope to we'll see you guys in the next video see you guys